Well, subjects tend to come to you rather than you choose them somehow. I, um, I've been spending quite a few years in Berlin as my second city and um, had a growing interest in the phenomenon of the German Jews um, who used to make, have such an impact on that city, not least, um, to be the kind of the cultural part of the cultural patchwork in a very important way and seem to shine in their absence, so to speak, ever since the disasters of the 1940s. So it was them as such as a, as a, as an, as a phenomenon in, in German history and culture. But also, of course, I got increasingly fascinated by their aspirations to be perfectly assimilated, to be Germans before they were Jews. This is something I find very relevant to the to modern debate about integration, assimilation, and how to bring different peoples together in one, in one society. And uh, so that I kind of had in my back, uh, back of my head when I heard the first time of this phenomenon of the Cultural League of German Jews. The fact that there was a mass organization during Nazism for Jews to uh, perform all kinds of cultural activities, concerts, operas, ballet, theater, you name it. Um, I never heard of that organization before and I just got intrigued on that note. Uh, and then soon after I ran into a book by Martin Goldsmith, an American who, whose father was in this organization and who confronted his father with his past. Uh, there I found a personal angle to the whole phenomenon that was intriguing. Well, the thing is that um, I, I will not be the judge of whether they were right or wrong, but I am fascinated by the apparent project of German Jews to become Germans, to put their heritage second to a citizenship because they believed in a, in a society as a project, so to speak, to be a citizen in a project rather to cling to your tribal identity. Uh, this is, I think, what is relevant to the modern debate. Uh, how much you should hang on to where you come from and how much you should aspire to be a citizen where you are. They were certainly accepted before Nazism came. Of course, there was always anti-Semitism in Germany. And by the way, German Jews is hard to differ. You cannot say that Jews are something separate from Germans because they are part of Germany since the early Middle Ages. It's if it is, if you like, a German tribe, like the Schwabs or the Bavarians in, in some ways. But of course, for the centuries, they've been living in separate lives in kind of ghetto conditions. And during the 19th century, there is then the influx to the cities and then this new class of people who um, put their Jewish identity second. That all looked very good and nice uh, and making progress until Hitler come along, came along, so to speak, and put a stop to it. Of course, obviously, there are uh, attentions and there, are, uh, there is anti Semitism, there are other kinds of racism. But uh, I'm equally interested in the effort that uh, ethnic groups, if you like, can make themselves to be part of society. Uh, and I'm somehow moved by the position of the old man, the main character of the film, about how he insists to be a German despite of all that happened. Uh, so my point is not to make the simple comparison that Jews were persecuted like migrants are persecuted today. I'm equally interested in the efforts made by, made by the Jews themselves to be part of a, of a greater whole. Well, that was a very um, easy process, I would say, very creative process. We happen to be kind of kindred spirits. Um, we share a passion for music and um, saw things in much the same way. So I, I felt it was a very um, unproblematic collaboration to go back to his past and, and, and unfold his story with his father. Um, it's, it, it was a pleasure, that's all I can say, and um, something I didn't find too difficult to understand or feel into. Of course, style comes much from solving proper problems of storytelling. What are the problems of the story? And the style grows from there. So obviously, also in this case, we knew we had to travel back to the Germany of the 30s. That was a very crucial part of the film to be there 
to be with the character as he experiences things unfolding. And, uh, be but because I really am very anxious to get things right and to, to, uh, to be as authentic as possible. This is something I take from me from, take with me from documentary. I hesitated to make, to try and get, uh, built, uh, big sets and, uh, streets views or whatever to, of, you know, uh, building the whole universe artificially in a studio or otherwise, I found it much more intriguing to work with the existing authentic photos, photos and films and see if we could put our characters somehow into those pictures. By that, in my opinion, enjoying more authenticity, uh, being really more there uh, than we would have been if we had just built our own set. I, I mean, I, I would say that although this, this, it's a tragedy we're dealing with, we are dealing with the Holocaust ultimately and the consequences of it, of survival skills, of many sinister aspects of history, I still hope the audience can find encouragement and some joy in, if nothing else, enjoying the fantastic music that we are allowed to use. See, normally classical music is difficult to apply to film, especially if you talk of the great masters. Beethoven, Mozart, Brahms, Schubert, because it easily becomes pretentious. It easily becomes the director's pretentious comment to what's going on. Now we had the privilege that the, this great music came out of the stories. The, the music we're playing were important for the story as it unfolded. So we, we had the privilege of using some of the best of Western classical music. Uh, and if nothing else, I hope that will in itself be an, an uplifting aspect of the film.